you had so much success with the solo album released back in 08. Did that make you hesitant at all to maybe go back to Bush? Um, no. <laughs> um, when I tried to do that solo record, I wanted it to be a Bush record. So in a way, the first few months of, the, of that solo record's life was um, intended as a Bush record. So in a sense, it was, you know, I was just left with a choice of, and not make music at all, or or do it myself, you know, because uh, the band wasn't happening right then. I tried really hard to to make it a, a a perfect return of all four members, you know, and then that that didn't work. But it just never felt like um, complete. You were saying you know trying to get all all the original guys back. Was it a little disappointing that uh, some of them passed on this opportunity? Surprising more than anything. But um, I'm such a worker that I don't understand when people don't want to work doesn't make sense to me but having said that I understand you know reservations families I mean people we have to take into account that to do this even for a band that doesn't do well is an in, in, intense sacrifice and uh, impedance on your, your your life and and for you like being such a worker and stuff like that you, you've managed to make a great balance though with your family life and everything because uh, you know your wife very busy as well but you've managed to to create a really nice balance yeah I don't know how we've done it <laughs> I was gonna ask you for the secret I don't, I don't, when you have any idea outside of a desire to make things work, it's usually a, it's usually a great system. And and with the current lineup of Bush, though, even though it's not all the original guys, it is guys that you've been playing with for quite a while. Exactly. So there's no there was no audition process. There's no new people. Chris even played with um, me and Bush on the Golden State tour. Corey's played with me the last three years. It really works out well. I mean, I couldn't be more happy. I had an incredible run with the original four. I have like, you know, mad love for all of them and now I'm in a different situation and it's also really, really amazing. I mean, when I thought about getting the band back together that wasn't complete, it made me think of like Robert Smith with a cure. Where as long as he's singing and he's writing, you know, it's pretty cure like. And and the single that's out right now, The Sound of Winter, I was curious, what's the story behind that song? I always like to find out what the songwriter was going for when they were uh, penning a tune. Well, I'd written I basically had written what I thought was the record. And there was an interim when we, we really felt that um, it was essential to leave Interscope Records because um, it was an unfriendly place for us. It wasn't, wasn't working. And uh, I didn't really like how they treated me all, over the solo stuff. And I didn't want to go through the whole process of making a record again that I really cared about, really worked at, and it just be sort of not worked. So it took a few months to leave there. In the process of leaving, I really thought that best weapon in any situation for me is to get back in the studio and write songs. So I went in to write some more songs and see if they could, you know, supplant any of the tracks on the record. Meanwhile, I got a new, got new management to add to my existing management. I have four managers <laughs> for whatever reason, <laughs> and I love them all, and they're all amazing. And they said, "Let's. I want to, you know, well, we want to inspire you. We're going to work with you. The solo record was a huge hit." We want to inspire you to make the record of your career. And I was thinking, I thought I made a pretty good record already. <laughs> but um, I just sort of swallowed that up. Then I, so I wrote these five songs, and Sound of Winter was one of those songs. So basically, it's only written three months ago. And I wanted to do those songs about the ominous clouds coming. You know, when you, you, you're out with someone you care about, and you think everything's hunky-dory and going ahead perfect. And there's one comment, and it just it throws everyone for a loop. And you think, oh, no, the night's going a different way, you know? <laughs> yeah. There's an, un an unexpected twist, <laughs> you know, and they're mad at you or you're mad at them. And you just, you get this sense of, oh, that moment where you know that you're in the doghouse for three days. And, um, and that's the genesis of that song. And you had Bob Rock come in and produce this album. And I've talked to other artists who uh, have had Bob work with them, and they say he adds another layer. And I know he worked with you on the solo record as well. D did you find that Bob did add another layer to the recording process? Um, oh, he's all about adding layers, and I'm all about stripping them away. So there's always a perfect creative tension with us, which I love. Um, he is a, a very, very good producer and a, and a great musician. And what I like about him, I mean, obviously, each band he works with is going to work with him in a different way. And the way that he worked with me is just he has a good sense of what to work on and what not to work on. You know, he's very open about that. He's sort of pretty ego-free about it in the sense that if he feels he doesn't have to do much to a song or suggest much to a song, then he won't, you know. But 
he's usually got something really good to say and something pretty, pretty incisive and he's got a great knowledge of sound, of guitars um, and also the history of music uh, and, and that goes for current bands. You know, you'll say something and he'll say, well, this is what so-and-so would do. This is, this, this, check this line out, this sound, you know. And so he's very knowledgeable like that and he's great to be around. You know, when you're in the studio, you have to, you have to be with people you primarily that you like. So he fills all those boxes and we'd have a great time. Um, I'm not sure sometimes if I drive him a bit nuts because... <laughs> quite uh, independent then we stop and then he goes then we become a codependent <laughs> yeah. you know so it was a push pull but um, there's a reason why I made two records with him and there's hopefully a reason why I'll make another record with him I just I really like him I mean I love the idea you know Nigel Godrich who does all the Radiohead records it's a fantastic team you know and he, they seem to bring the best out of each other and that's how I feel about Bob shift gears a little bit I know you're a huge tennis fan and Really good friends with Roger Federer, U.S. Open underway. Is your money on Federer to win the Open this year? Uh, always. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's very dangerous. Um, he gets a good run. Who knows? I don't. It's with all those guys. To be honest, any of those sort of elite five or six could break through on the right day. Basically, they just say for what is a major, you're going to win seven, eight matches or something. So it really is about the whole preparation, the run, the feeling around it. But yes. I already know that if he gets to the final, I'll be on a flight to St. Louis to New York City. Sunday morning, baby. Nice. Uh, we'll look for you in the stands then. And you've played with him, and I know you're, you're a pretty good tennis player, but when you get a point on, on uh, Roger, do you ever look at him and go, did you let me have that one, or did I legitimately just get a point on Roger Federer? Well, you know, you know, you know, you know. I mean, he's, he's a ridiculous tennis player, so you can, can muster up a, a couple of points here and there and feel good about yourself. <laughs> But um, pretty hard to do over a sustained period. <laughs> <laughs> I know acting is another thing you really enjoy doing, um, but with Bush back on the road, you'll have to put that on the back burner. But is it something you'll go back to once the Yeah, the you know, I really done? love that process. It's a really nice, um, it's a respite from the studio for me. It's something different. Somebody else has to think about the first, you know, to filling the blank bit of paper. And I really, I, I love it. I did it recently. I did it literally three, four months ago. So I did that in, in Miami, and, um, in Coconut Grove, which sounds much nicer than it is. <laughs> You have so much going on. There's so much uh, great buzz around the Bush reunion. Uh, what's the word to describe the world of Gavin Rosdale right now? Today, the word I wake up and I'm doing, you know, speaking to, to, to you, it's, I realize the word is thrilling because yesterday it was like incredible. The day before it was like really something. The day, you know, it, it keeps on gaining momentum and um, it just it's just the strangest thing because I was always trying to do it, but it never felt like to me in my sort of English cynical way. I didn't know if anybody cared. I didn't expect anybody to care. I didn't assume that anybody would care. Um, I just felt from my own heart and my own um, creativity that to bring, you know, to make new music, I wanted to be Bush because I was just sick of, I was like, why, why have I got to forsake what I built? Why have I got to let go of, of, of everything that, that we all worked for so hard just because one other guy doesn't want to tour, turns out two that can't tour, but at that point it was one. <laughs> and I was like, I I'm insane. I this is really nuts. And, you know, I've clearly respectfully led the, left the gate, the, the, the door to my house open for like eight, nine years. And it's just like, it, no one's coming in. <laughs> Shut that door, get in the studio, get the guys around you that are going to be in Bush, and off you go. And it's just been this... Really incredible ride so far. We've literally just began. You've been on both ends of the spectrum now, though, having the band break up and dealing with that reaction, and then uh, the reaction that people have now that Bush is back out there. It's a bit like when um, when a, a marriage, a public marriage, falls apart. I mean, guys, we don't really care that much, you know. Like our girls go, "Ooh, look," you know, so and so. But at the same time, there's something. Oh, that marriage. Okay, love fades. We knew it. You know, it just confirms our worst fears. And conversely, when people get together or people get married, it really is a traditional sense of, of um, they're declaring their love for each other publicly. Cool. That's nice, man. You know, look at this world where people most of the time are, are trying to blow each other's heads off. So when a band that people have had as a soundtrack, a backdrop to their lives, which is what I keep being told, and then that band disbands, it really is like, well, get over it. You'll, we all grow up. You've grown up. That period of your life is over. You know, there's a, there's a romantic end, you know, it's this sort of full stop. And so to be doing it again, it's really like people go, oh, there's hope, look at that. You know, thanks, we really wanted to hear those songs from you guys and not in your solo context. We wanted to hear it from the band and people have been so gracious about it that, that we're, we're thrilled. And, and, you know, because it does start with the music, you know, you can't, 
do this reunion nonsense and not have a great record and just say, yeah, don't worry, we're going to play Machine Head six times. <laughs> cool. It's cool, man. You know? Well, I was going to say that that awe factor comes in and then if – if it's not backed up with good tunes, the off fact, the off shucks factor, yeah, of course, fades it, really quick. Oh, we really do all fade. You know, you've get released two great songs so far from the new album, so uh, the off shucks factor has now gone into the oh great, they're back and they're still kicking ass. So proud of this record, I, I, I can't tell you. I mean, I was actually really proud of the Institute record and the solo record as well, but um, that's because we worked so hard on them. But uh, this is really. It's got a lot to it. So it's like a real, it's like a, a real lot of meat on the bone. One more thing I wanted to ask you before I let you go: your daughter Daisy Lowe is in this month's edition of Playboy. What was the conversation like when she told you she was going to be doing the magazine? Well, we have a great relationship. You know, we're very close, uh, and we, you know, obviously it's uh, it's been an interesting, um, challenging time, but but we're doing fantastic. She, it, I don't have enough say. You know, she's a grown, grown, grown up girl, and. Um, she, I, she just told me, you know, so I was, I was, I was like, um, okay, well, you know, it's really nothing to do with me, you know, I'd have to kind of be very careful with that, so I just have to let it, let, let it be her own decision, and, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm a very, I don't judge, so therefore, I, 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 I sustain that position, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's obviously going to be different if you've grown up with someone, and they may, may even ask you before you do it, but, if you have it and you're just kind of getting to, you know, getting to know someone real good, it's not really your place to say anything. So, very, very true. Modern life, what are you going to do?